Hello and welcome to the GKC show. Uh, I am your host, Mark Lombardi, aka Block Fisher in the uh, in the Discord and on Twitter. Uh, and I am joined here with Sam Whitaker. And if you, I, you you're doxed already now, so uh, uh, you also go by uh, the Chief Nut or the the Head Nut, right? Right, the Head, right, the head yeah. Nut. So if you yeah. want to look for him uh, in the Discord, GKC Discord, he is there. So welcome to the show. This is our first episode. Uh, just a little brief introduction of what we're trying to do here. Just an opportunity to showcase some of the GKC members and uh, and what we're all about and looking to do and kind of news and topical current events in the, in the GKC lounge. And that's that's kind of it. So without further ado, we'll we'll just kind of roll right into it. So uh, so Sam, uh, why uh, why did you what kind of brought you into NFT.com? Kind of start with the Genesis story there. The Genesis story of the Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, reading about it and honestly, it was uh, just kind of looking at the general market um, and the big names that were involved. Uh, usually, if you get smart people who have a track record, record of success and a decent amount of money behind them as well, uh, it's usually, usually a recipe for a, a successful project. And I love the idea of, I know that, uh, you know, not a lot's out there about what exactly the future is going to be, but I think we can all read between the lines and we see that they're, that NFT.com is being built as more than just an exchange. It's yeah. not just going to be open sea version 2.0. Um, there's going to be some actual tech behind it. There's going to be some infrastructure. It's going to help people, um, get their projects off the ground and it's exciting to be a part of it. And, uh, yeah, with the market, the way it is right now, I think, uh, Project built for the long term with a little bit of patience and a little bit of a thoughtful roadmap. Uh, they're going to be the ones that end up uh, coming out ahead when we get through this. Someday. Yeah, they, so th this is the time for projects to really build and and not ride on the coattails of a of a market that seems to go up exponentially and, and without any end. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about, I, I was into the NFT.com team for a lot of the same reasons. I mean, the, the team is really strong. They have a great track record. Uh, I keep, I still keep discovering people that are involved in the project on the back end that I'm just like blown away by, um, I can't remember his last name, but, but Andrew, uh, the guy that's part of a part of Nillion. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on him and he's just fascinating and, and some of the stuff that he's done. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very excited about what the NFT.com has, uh, up their sleeve and, and what we're able to contribute to it as well. Uh, that, that's kind of one of the things that I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding that I think a lot of... I don't want to say a lot of people. I think some people who got into the project and don't see a polished product right now, we're expecting NFT.com to do everything for us. Uh, and I think that our feedback is really a crucial part of, of how the thing gets built and what features are getting used. And I really have adapted to these small little changes that they're doing in our profiles and things like that to just test things out as they go. Um, yeah, that's and, really good. Yeah, so again, it's it's slow and steady change, but I think it's gonna make for a real robust product. Uh, one of the things that really excited me about it too was this idea about NFTs being attached to real world items as well. Um, you know, the, the Kevin O'Leary story of, of tokenizing watches that are, you know, FP Jorn or whatever, Rolexes. Um, that's something that I think is going to catch main the eye of mainstream. There really still is that image of NFTs as just a JPEG that you can right-click copy. And I, I don't think the general public really understands that. I mean, there, there obviously are a lot of use cases for that kind of stuff when it comes to community building and access to different uh, online content and live events and things like that. And that's stuff that I'm interested in, live events and, uh, and, and at token gated access and all that kind of stuff. So, but we'll- Yeah, I think to your point, it's, um, you know, it, it's a different world now. Um, I like to liken it a lot to kind of the difference between the late 90s and the early 2000s of the internet boom. Uh, in the late 90s, it was start a website, go public, make millions, you're good to go, which is kind of like the early wild west of the of, uh, distributed ledger. Um, 
and then the, the crash hit and you know early 2000s is when you know google uh put put it together when facebook put it together some of the bigger companies in the world that were essentially didn't exist in 1999 and that's when they were really consolidating their efforts and when they were really focusing on a product and it's not as opposed to the kind of ready fire aim um uh basis that we what, that we saw throughout the early days of crypto um now again it's the thoughtful roadmap it's the patience it's really building a product that's going to last for the future and to your point about the real world applications of nfts over just a, a crypto punk or a board ape um i mean it's really limitless and i think that's something that nft.com is really focusing on i know it's something i'm focusing on the um tokenization of everything in our lives really and we saw to bring it back to the internet analogy um we saw how the uh internet web one whatever you want to call it took over our lives from the span of mm -hmm. 2000 to now and i really think the next 22 years could be when mm -hmm. web three has a similar if not even more uh, impactful um impact on on our lives and it's exciting to be in at the ground floor it's exciting to be a part of it i know you're excited too, so. yeah I, oh, I think well, you go back to the the origins of the internet with uh http and uh, what what i find interesting is that when when that whole protocol was and i'm not a coder or a developer or anything like that so i don't want to make it seem like i am but but when that was all being developed there everybody's familiar with the 404 error right like file not found right well there was another error code that was developed which is the 402 error which never really got implemented it still gets used for for different types of applications but that error is error payment not found there was supposed to be in HTTP, this payment method that was part of the internet. It was going to be a part of the backbone of it. And it never came to fruition because they couldn't figure out a way to make it work. And now crypto is that technology that allows it to work. And I think it's funny. I haven't seen an actual 402 error pop up yet, but the possibility is definitely there. So I think we're finally starting to realize the the initial vision of what the internet was supposed to be, which included payment rails so that anybody could pay any, anyone around the world for anything. I haven't heard anybody mention a 402 error in a long time. A long I, think time. I think you're dating us a little bit. We're docs, but now we're dated. Yeah, also. docs. <laughs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm getting up there in age. So, uh, yeah. Let me, I, leave I, I, let me leave numbers out. We'll just to say yeah we're familiar with these things <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll date myself with napster i was i was in college when napster went big and i have to admit i was one of the i was one of those people who had a hard drive full of <laughs> music that, that i didn't own and now down the road i'm i'm very excited to see that artists are finally going to get paid fairly for um for their for their creations uh, I, I'm, I love music NFTs. I, I think that that's a really big space. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what kind of use cases come out for musicians as they start to play around with this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. Although with Napster, I do think that if, you know, if it took you four hours to download a Blink-182 song, you deserve to get it for free. Right. <laughs> if you're going to put in that kind of work, you know, I, I think you're good. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's interesting across the board, and uh, you know, I, I don't think we can go through this without talking about the market at the moment. Oh yeah. Kind of, but the elephant in the room is the bear in the room, and uh, I think anybody who thought that we weren't heading for some kind of bear market is starting to realize, and it's definitely scary as as you watch your CoinGecko account tick down and down and down. Um, but I think that again brings us back to a project like NFT.com, and I know you and I are both fans of Hedera as well. Mm -hmm. It's another project that's kind of embracing the slow and steady wins the race. Um, and it's you know if if you want to really be successful long term, you're in it for the long haul. You dollar cost average. This is not financial advice, by the way. We we want to preface yes. that. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, you stay in there for the long haul. And I think it was Kevin O'Leary was talking about he's betting on the technology. He's not betting yes. on the hype. He's betting on the technology. And 
Hedera's technology, NFT.com's coming technology. I mean, those are the things that are going to shape Web3 as Web3 shapes our civilization, essentially. So again, it's, it's really exciting to be on the ground floor. Yeah, I think the, the, sh the shift from Web3 is a really interesting one because it really puts the consumer in an active role within an organization. Right. You you now become I'll give you an example of uh, well, I get NFT.com is a really good example of that. Right. We're we're all as the consumer, the initial consumers of NFT.com also being given the ability to put feedback into how the product is developed. And, and I think that that will that will create a more robust product in the long term, something that is more geared towards the people that are going to be utilizing it. Uh, and I see other stuff like there's some data. Uh, so we'll talk about NFT.com or not. We'll talk about NFT NYC a little bit here as well. Um, I'm really excited about the NFT.com wag me party, um, but I'm also excited about some of the other stuff that's happening at uh, NF NFT NYC. I get my NFT.com and NFT what NYC there's a lot of mix. Of, there's a lot of right, exactly. Um, so there's a an organization called Webfest, which is starting up a DAO, which is going to be meant to put on concerts, right? So everybody that's a part of the DAO will get to pit, you know, be able to help pick what artists are going to play at what festivals or concerts and where they'll be, and that's exciting, right? You get to be a part of of that organization and how it develops and and, ha and and be more active in it when the actual concert is taking place. You have a sense of pride that, that you were a part of it. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah, and it's really cool, when you're, especially when you're talking about the DAO. I mean, it's gonna, you know, we're gonna have growing pains. It's a difficult, it's a tough needle to thread to get a DAO up and running. And that's really the, the hardest part. I think we talk about a lot of the Discord boards about, you know, when are we going to have a vote? When are we going to do this? And it's another instance, I think, of the NFT.com leadership saying, we need to do this right. We need to slow it down a little yeah. bit. We need to make sure that we walk before we run. And it's easy for something like a DAO to kind of run off the rails early. And it's, mm -hmm. it's much harder to get it back than it is to build it to start with. So I think we trust the leadership and we trust the fact that we're, you know, we're in this for the long haul, again, uh, for this project and for the market as a whole. Yeah, and I'm not phased by the market as all at all. I'm this is it's a blip in the very long term things. I don't like to speculate on what the price of anything is going to be in the future either. I'm try and focus on what's the utility. Is this going to be something useful in my life down the future, and should I continue forward with it? And and I think that all of this technology is going to be useful in the future. Um, is it going to look like it does now in the future? No, not at all. But that, that's fine, too. I mean, I'm glad the Internet doesn't still look like GeoCities uh, <laughs> or to date myself even more than that. You know, you there talk are about people watching this that have no earthly yeah, 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 idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well if, if you have an idea what MySpace, well, if you know what Facebook is, it was re that replaced MySpace. And MySpace basically replaced GeoCities, which was a very, very bare bones, ugly to look at kind of thing. But it was, you know, it was the initial way that people were able to have their own little web space and communicate their, you know, what they think about the world to the world. Uh, and thankfully it's evolved a lot since then. Yeah. And I think we, but we both and all believe that uh, NFT.com is going to be the next evolution of this ecosystem. So it's exciting. Yeah, it, it has, it certainly has the ingredients that are necessary to make it happen. Um, it's definitely not a guaranteed. I love that that Jordan has stepped up and said, like, look, we're giving this a shot. This isn't a guarantee that this is going to work out or but, you know, we're going to put all of our resources that we have into it and make sure that it does. Absolutely. Cool. So uh, so what other kinds of stuff are you looking forward to at, at uh, NFT NYC? Because you're going to be there all three days, right? Yeah, I'm going to be there the whole days. time. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna be uh, wearing this T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, oh so, yeah, yeah. Pro rep your uh, your project. Yeah. So when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, Mark, you were talking about how um, 
the NFTs can be so much more than just the JPEGs and things like that. And uh, we are starting off, like I said, we are definitely interested in that, but we're starting off absolutely leaning into it with a project called Hotel D's Nuts. Um, this is uh, meant to be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> it's an NFT project we're launching on Hedera. Uh, we hope very, very soon to list it on NFT.com. Uh, hint, hint, Jordan, Alex. Um, and uh, yeah, it's exciting. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it. I'm gonna be talking about it at um, NFT NYC. Uh, it's a very, very small initial release. Actually, the uh, GKC members are the only ones who know about it right now. Uh, it's gonna be literally invite only. I'm gonna talk to every single, talk to, chat with every single person who gets one of our OG nuts. Um, because, you know, to the point of, N of NF or NFT.com is first thing you gotta do is build the minimum viable community. Right. And the best way to do that is put your face out there, talk to people, be involved, be on the boards, you know, be available to chat and text and telegram and whatever. Um, so that's what we're kind of trying to do. Like I said, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, we've got, aside from just the fun of the product, uh, it's actually yielding NFT. So uh, the OGs are going to yield at least twice as much as any other nut in the future. Okay. Um, we've got at least three more releases coming up uh, after this one. So we're going to build that by minimum viable community. And it, listen, the bottom line is if, you, if you're not interested in a never ending stream of these nuts jokes, right. then, you're, then not this is not your you. space. <laughs> no. but, uh, but if you are and you're looking to have some fun and uh, hopefully be part of a project long term, track me down at uh, NFT NYC. I'll be wearing this. Also, a uh, website, there's an application form. So nice. it'll be fun. I put in my application last night, so I'm I, looking forward oh, to my interview, if this isn't it already. <laughs> I say you're on the top of the pile. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, I mean, so. Yeah, I love fun projects like this. There's there's a few different ones out there. Uh, you know, I won't mention any of uh, any of them in case you want to work with them or compete against them or anything like that. But there's some some really cool stuff that you can do within that kind of joke meme Um kind of space and you know yeah. once you create a community there's all kinds of value that you can provide for people so yeah and it's a good point that you bring up when you talk about uh work with slash compete i feel like that's a great thing in this community especially but in a lot of web3 in general is that people are more collaborative than you find in a lot of other areas mm -hmm. because we all know uh, on a couple calls ago jordan brought up a stat i still haven't actually been able to track down the article but it's uh 4 billion internet users, 350 million that have interacted with crypto, and only 7 million who've owned an NFT. So there's this massive market of that's untapped of people who have never interacted with an NFT, barely know what it is. And I think if we keep this, we're all in it together, and a rising tide raises all boats and things like that, we can really build together. We can have a lot of successful projects. Um, and I feel like that's the vibe at NFT.com within the Genesis Key community, um, and it's exciting. So I don't see really competing. I see working with and trying to bolster each other's projects as much as possible. Yeah, I don't see it as – I don't think the real – hard-nosed competitive aspect of this industry comes into play until there's a great big shakeout and there's – and you know, a lot of projects are no longer there. But to be honest, I only think it's going to be the giant projects that wind up. There's going to be, right, there are a lot of giant projects right now. In the next two to three years, there will not be a lot of giant projects. I think it's going to shake out the same way that the internet shook out it, back in the, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s. Right. There there were a lot of companies that had a lot of venture capital. And then at the end of it, there were very few companies that had a lot of venture capital. But there's still a million websites. There's still a lot of little niche things for people to do within the Internet that are still very viable companies. Um, and I think the same thing will be true with with Web3. There will be a handful of, of big winners that all the venture capital funds made out with everything else will go away well not everything else but all the big stuff will go away because they can't make it and then all the rest of it will be small projects that are kind of mom and pop shop stuff um that have their own small little unique communities yep but it is a big pie right now and a lot of it's untouched yeah. so i think there's there's plenty to go around at least at this point uh so you know be supportive of each other be supportive Absolutely. of other people's product projects and 
hype each other and uh you know especially if you know if you're launching on a, a platform like adara like 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 we are um everybody's really collaborative and understands that it's about growing that brand as much as it's about growing your own brand and kind of the same thing with nft.com as we can roll out our projects once the infrastructure is in place we're not only growing our nft.com slash whatever we're growing nft.com as a whole and it helps everybody so so sam you had mentioned uh you know obviously wanting to bring this project onto nft.com um there is obviously right now nft.com is eth only where what do you see the pathways for not necessarily just Hedera, but other like solana and tezos and algorand and all the other platforms that are out there what do you see as the pathway for those projects to become supported by nft.com well, I think that uh, the team has been pretty clear from day one that they want to be platform agnostic. Right. Uh, and it, it makes sense. They, I mean, there's a lot of people in the senior leadership that came from Madeira. Um, But it, it, there was no choice. You had to launch on Ethereum. It's, I mean, it's, it's far and away the largest. There's, there's no other way to go if you want to build a project of this size. Um, but I think that the, the pathway is fairly simple. Um, you know, you start bringing on the other uh, platforms, you know, like you said, Hedera, Solana, things like that. Um, and then there's a real marketplace for the products that can bridge between them securely and bridge between blockchains and hash graphs and keep them, keep things secure, keep things safe. That's a massive marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, to kind of where you can have one wallet that, I mean, you know, we've talked about a little bit, uh, you know, MetaMask, you can import your Hedera NFTs into MetaMask. It's a little bit of a couple steps, but making things truly platform independent, making things that can communicate across platforms and then making it brain dead simple for someone to sign up for it, um, yeah. where they're almost, it's almost like signing up for, uh, you know, registering on a website with your email address and a password. And it's the, the, the reason we're at 7 million NFT holders and th only 350 million crypto holders is that it's a process and, you know, it can be yeah. daunting to have to break down your private key and make sure you keep it safe. And, it, you know, people can get turned off by that. And I think that's another really big opportunity for someone like NFT.com to make it brain dead simple, where if you can use a computer, you can sign up and start yeah. pulling NFTs. It, ha it has to be s as simple as an email account or a social media account or, or something like that, because that's what people are used to, the masses, and they, right, they, they will get confused and, right, I have a hard time onboarding my father into this stuff. You know, he's interested in it, but he, again, it's one of the, he lost his first Tadera wallet address and it's about 2000 H bar that was in there that I gave to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that I was, I was like, yeah, oh, you got to send that. I was like, oh, I meant to ask you to send that back to me. And he was like, oh, I was like, I don't know how to get back into the wallet. And I was like, <laughs> what? <All right. laughs> Yeah, Thanks, that's man. a great that's a great story. I actually uh, one of the I use one of my profile myths to register uh, slash baseball cards because mm -hmm. my dad and I collected baseball cards when we were kids. Nice. And you know maybe we'll do something with it personally. Maybe we'll just list our cards, whatever. But I gave it to him as a Father's Day present because you know it was just something we did together. And nice. it's kind of like bringing that that generation, our parents, into what we do and kind of making them a part of it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, there's there's all. So, what other kinds of profiles do you have? Do you have how many profiles do you have? I have. You know, you have? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I have quite a few. Um, one that I'm excited about is actually the first one that I registered because uh, if everybody remembers the the mad rush to register uh, domains when the Genesis keys were first released, I really wanted I really wanted Hoddle or yeah. Hoddle's not. I really wanted it. I typed as quick as I could. It was gone. Um, so the first one I actually got was Cherry. Slash charity, and it's something that's okay. important nice. to me. The, I mean, it's I always try to look for a charitable angle with with projects that I do. Um, it's a personal thing, and um, I'd really love to make it something that's kind of like a, a trusted, safe area for charitable projects on Web three. I mean, there's so many projects out there who say, "Hey, sign up for us, and we're going to donate X amount to this charity." You don't know if that charity is valid. You don't know right. you know if it if the money is actually going there. 
Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet, but it's one of those things that's out there that I want to focus on. And it's cool to be a part of a community with um, uh, NFT.com that, you know, as part of the DAO, people, you meet people. And it's not it's not a DAO um, action. It's something I'm doing. But you meet people who might be interested, might be interested in doing some development, might be interested in doing some design, might know some charitable uh, organizations that we might want to work with. Um, and I've always believe that charitable causes and giving can really bring a community together mm -hmm. any kind of community um, i'm still pushing the uh alec and jordan to i would love when the marketplace finally launches for nft.com to do like a soft launch one day where it's just donated nfts going to st jude's my favorite personal charity i don't think yeah. it gets much better than them so if we could do like some kind of a soft launch that was just donated nfts price proceeds going to help the kids I think that could be amazing for the cause. I think it could be amazing for us. I think it would be great press. I think it would be yeah, a, yeah it hits all the notes. Um, it'd be a great way to launch and again get the community involved and make us a part of something. We all want to make money, um, and that's fine. You can do well and do good. Um, so I think I'm going to keep hammering away at that one. Uh, but there's so many things. There's so many. Web three can be a massive portal for charitable donations across the board. Um, with well, it, tri and that's it. That it's a it's a space that needs the transparency, right? Because, like you said, a lot of people don't know: is my money or how much of my money is actually going to the charity? How is the charity <laughs> using it? Uh, you know, is the charity actually using it? Um, yep. uh, so, I think that that's a very important information that will make it. It will allow more people to give who are on the fence about giving because they have hesitations because they're not sure where everything's a hundred percent traceable. It's yeah. on the blockchain or the hash graph, and you know exactly where it goes. Yeah, I, I couldn't true. agree more. I think that's where um, you know Web three in general, NFT.com, all of us, uh, we have an opportunity to really do some good, and it's un yet another thing to be excited about <laughs> for the long term yeah. and being on the ground floor. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of I went kind of casted a, a wide net. I went 10, um, <laughs> 10 <laughs> profiles, um, and I only have two keys. So I, I guess I've only bought a couple. Well, I, bought, I think I bought four profiles on my own because I still have one of my keys that has two profiles left on it. Um, but I did some interesting stuff. Like I, I was able to grab SaaS, um, S-A-A-S. Uh, I think software as a service is is a really interesting play into the NFT space as you you know the potential to be able to license uh, a SaaS uh, outlet to be able to do stuff through an NFT through NFT access is kind of cool. Uh, I also grabbed Christmas. Uh, I thought that would be a lot of fun. Um, I do remember back to this past, you know, November and December when there was just, you know, Christmas NFTs all over the place. So I thought that that would be kind of a fun little tchotchke type of, of shop to have. Um, I wanted to grab, so I'll tell you a quick little story about um, Mint Day for me. So Mint Day came on uh, the day of my daughter's uh, pl school play. Um, that evening. Uh, and so I had to be at the play and I was cringing because I got to the play and it was, I think it was six o'clock or something, 6 PM. And the play hadn't started. And I was like, oh, if I had just stayed home, <laughs> I could have minted my keys and still got to the school in time to not miss the beginning of the play. But I love my daughter and my family. And I mean, there's no way I would have lived it down if I had missed the play for an NFT. Um, <laughs> so I didn't get to mint until a few hours later. Um, and But I still got some good stuff. But I missed out on my OG and, and, and music and there's a whole bunch of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's a great one, though, and that's, and, and that's a good, uh, you know, it, it's going to be valuable as you get institutional um, adoption of Web3 right. and NFT specifically. Yeah, it's a much um, longer play, but, uh, you know, yeah. and I'm not going to be able to build out the infrastructure for it, but, you know, somebody will want it at some point. You know? Either flip it or partner with them, yeah. There's, yeah. there's plenty of options. Yeah, I think, so So that's another area that I think is really interesting in NFT.com is this ability to kind of inject yourself into a space that you might not have been in already because you own the profile for it, right? Now, all of a sudden, potentially, I could be involved in some kind of SaaS project where otherwise I wouldn't have a foot in the door 
when it came to something like that, because I have nothing else to bring to the table when it comes to development or, or anything like that. So, and that allows, that opens the door for all kinds of networking opportunities, which, which is kind of the other angle that I see NFT.com as is kind of like this country club, you know, business gets done on the golf course. This is kind of a way to play in, in that networking space um, without needing country, well, hopefully the, a Genesis key will go for a country club membership at some point, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. for right now, I, I think it's nice that it's more accessible to people. Um, and yeah, then, that's, what, that's something that we're focusing on. My company that actually owns uh, Total Leaf Nuts, um, we're definitely planning to focus on community building within NFT.com and trying to pair you know, our strengths with strengths of other community members, whether it's development, whether it's design and, you know, take what we can do with, you know, building out ideas for projects and, and working through the funding process and things like that. And really focusing on, you know, these are the things you do well, let's find some other people who do, who do other things well and all get together and you can do something great together. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a great space to be in. Yeah, well, the future is very bright. That's for sure. And uh, I think we might be getting close to winding up on time here. I don't want to keep the want to give the GKC members some some entertainment value and and, and fun and kind of get to know some of the other members. Um, but I don't want it to be too long winded. So everybody let me know this is going to get posted to YouTube. So let us know in the comments, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell us what you kind of stuff you want to see out of the show. I'd love to I'd love feedback on on where the community goes with this. Uh, again, I'm doing this for the community. So uh, your feedback is greatly appreciated. And with, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank and you. I think the one thing to, to kind of sum up is, uh, you know, it's, it's Jordan's quote that is always up and I, I'm going to butcher it probably, but, you know, what if we're in exactly the right place at exactly the right time yep. with exactly the right technology? Yep. And I think I, we always, my business partner and I, we always talk about how fortunate we are to be where we are working with the companies we're working with and the communities that we're working with. Uh, so, yeah, I've probably said I'm excited about 53 yeah. times in this <laughs> thing, but uh, I'm very excited. So very excited, feel very fortunate. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for setting this up. I had a blast and uh, we'll do it again soon. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate awesome. it. Everybody else, have a good one. See you in Wagme. Yes, absolutely.